So this video is going to be a departure from what I normally do on this channel, but this topic has been on my mind a lot lately, ever since I saw these makeup tutorials and skincare routine videos by Antoinette Star Poppy. I'm not a huge fan of makeup tutorials, but watching these short videos made me happy. Lip gloss. Here, I'll explain why, and also dive into the history of both Poppy and Mars Argo. I've been drawn to these two women's stories because, like them, I've been in an abusive relationship. And the work of trying to untangle the wire of someone's manipulations from your psyche is hard. Very hard. After a bad breakup, we want nothing more than to scrub the other person from our lives, block them on social media, box up their stuff, get a makeover or a new haircut. However, when that person is deeply connected to our creative projects, and we have to, to do this letting go and healing in public, it's even more difficult. If you're watching this, you're likely familiar with the character of Poppy, birth name Mariah Pereira, the cute, twee, vaguely pretentious singer who makes music along with abstract videos. The performer's first YouTube video as Poppy was of her eating cotton candy for a solid minute. I'm Poppy. I'm Poppy. I'm Poppy. A video of her repeating her name, Poppy, for 10 straight minutes went viral in January 2015 and helped launch her music career. That's how I discovered her. The video for Poppy's song Low Life features unusual outfits, like this oversized fluffy dress, a devil, and commentary on pop music. She leaves the set mid-video shoot to sit in a car with friends and inhale oxygen. This type of meta-commentary is a running theme of her work, the perils of fame and the nature of Hollywood. In addition to music videos, Poppy also appears in short clips for YouTube. While some videos are just obtuse, a plot emerges in later videos, featuring a mannequin named Charlotte as a character who criticizes Poppy. The videos have a very particular style, a carefully dressed Poppy interacting with a limited number of objects, all while standing or sitting in front of a stark all-white background. She has a particular manner, mostly expressionless with a high-pitched voice. Her first two albums, Poppy.Computer and Am I a Girl, play off this concept. Like a lot of folks, I find her videos weirdly soothing. Her voice is relaxing, the videos are pretty and well-made. Her look is partly inspired by kawaii imagery, in the same vein as Japanese singer Kurai Pami Pami, but less chaotic. Poppy's videos have comment sections full of inside jokes and speculations. What does any of this stuff mean? Is it a pattern or just random? Is she a real woman or an actress or an android? Poppy proved to be a perfect YouTube rabbit hole to fall down. Poppy's public appearances added to her mystique. She either answered interview questions with limited or nonsensical replies, or her creative partner, Titanic Sinclair, spoke for her. Her previous web history had been scrubbed clean. No old videos, no way to search her social media history on the Wayback Machine. While all this is an interesting meta-commentary on pop music, watching this footage now looks incredibly sinister. Enter Mars Argo, given name Brittany Sheets, singer and YouTube creator. In April 2018, Poppy and Sinclair were sued by Sinclair's former business partner, Mars Argo. Here, the manufactured mystery gives way to several real ones. Filed in California, Argo's lawsuit describes, in details with corroborating evidence, a history of alleged abuse at the hands of Sinclair, as well as Sinclair allegedly stealing Argo's persona and ideas. I'm saying alleged here because although we have this video of Sinclair breaking into Argo's house and smashing her wine glasses because she joined a Facebook group, the lawsuit was nonetheless settled out of court. Just so we're all clear though, I think Sinclair is a dumpster fire of a person. Welcome to my computer show, I'm Mars Argo. Let's take a look at the lawsuit. After meeting on MySpace, Mars Argo and Titanic Sinclair started dating and collaborating on a music video project. The pair made indie music and vlogs called The Computer Show, which parodied internet culture and talked about the pitfalls of fame. Sound familiar? It should. It's basically poppy shtick. The videos look similar, shot on a white background with the same odd sense of humor and deadpan style. Both Argo and Poppy have bleached blonde hair, and Poppy speaks in a higher voice when she's in character, perhaps to mimic Argo's natural pitch. Argo and Sinclair broke up in early 2014. In November 2014, 
Poppy's video of her eating cotton candy was released. Argo deleted all of her music videos, but three, and her social media accounts went dark around this time. Just as Argo was vanishing from the internet, Poppy was rearing her head. When you look at the video credits for Poppy's videos, it's easy to see why they resemble Argo so much. Sinclair directed them. He and Poppy created the character and concept together. While Sinclair's involvement in both women's music videos explains the similarities, it also shows how profoundly toxic Sinclair is. Both Argo and Poppy have videos called Delete Your Facebook and 336. Delete your Facebook. Delete your Facebook. Some shots from videos are similar, like this one of blood dripping from each woman's mouth. There are other examples from Argo's lawsuit. I really don't think that these are simply homages or references to Sinclair's earlier work. Especially with the bad breakup and the alleged abuse and stalking, it seems like a way for Sinclair to taunt Argo. But is this really copyright infringement? That's a question for a lawyer to answer. From what I can tell, cases like this are nearly impossible to prove. YouTubers mimic one another a lot, like musicians imitate each other. Think of Lady Gaga and Madonna. While there are tons of similarities between Argo and Poppy, I'm not sure. I'm more concerned with Poppy's knowledge of what was happening. How complicit was she in stealing and reappropriating Argo's work? Was she aware of what Sinclair was doing? How much did Sinclair groom her? Speaking of grooming, I'm uncomfortable with the age gap between Poppy and Sinclair. She was 19 when they met. He was 27. Poppy released a statement on Twitter addressing the lawsuit and defending Sinclair. In it, she doesn't mention the potential copyright issue at all and dismisses Argo's claims of abuse while saying that she's been abused as well. Here's where it gets a little complicated. In her response, Poppy accuses Argo of collaborating and maintaining an ongoing relationship with the exact man who took advantage of me when I was young and vulnerable. The man she is referencing is likely Josh Moran, a musician who is said to be friends with Argo. Further, Poppy tweeted two restraining orders she and Sinclair have against Moran, as well as a video of Moran and Sinclair getting into a fight. Poppy closes with calling the lawsuit frivolous. I do wonder how much Poppy knew and when she knew it. Her video's drama and You're Too Close were uploaded to YouTube in May 2018, and they put Poppy in a really bad light. Drama is clearly referencing the lawsuit, as it talks about Hollywood not being able to function without drama, and how some people don't become famous. It's hard to read this as anything other than a thinly veiled jab at Argo, especially with Poppy's statement that Argo filed her lawsuit as a desperate grab for fame. The video You're Too Close is disturbing and shows someone menacing Poppy as she backs away in fear. But being made right after our girl's lawsuit was filed, yeah, that's some serious bad taste. It wasn't just copyright infringement, though. According to the lawsuit, Argo allegedly suffered from severe emotional and psychological abuse and manipulation at the hands of Sinclair. What's more, Argo documented this harassment. In November 2014, Sinclair allegedly broke into Argo's house and blocked her friends on Facebook. In April 2015, he sent her a picture of himself sitting outside her door. He allegedly stalked her on social media, sent her threatening emails, and started to steal her creative ideas. In March 2015, she said she was working on a solo project called Guppy. Just two months later, in May 2015, Sinclair released a song called Guppy, with lyrics likely referencing Argo. All of these claims are documented in the lawsuit, and reading through it feels awful. Seriously, don't watch videos about this by yourself at night. I have no doubt that Sinclair emotionally abused Argo, and honestly, in this day of cancel culture, I'm shocked that Sinclair wasn't imme immediately blacklisted when this lawsuit came out. Why is anyone still working with this guy? His continued presence in the industry likely has to do with the lawsuit being settled out of court in September 2018. The settlement condition stated that Poppy and Sinclair had to turn over any photos and other materials of Argo. However, no funds were exchanged and no wrongdoing was admitted. Argo was granted a restraining order against Sinclair and given all the rights back to her work. After I fell down a YouTube rabbit hole about this lawsuit, I made the mistake of watching Sinclair's videos. Most of them are short, pretentious, and vaguely similar to Poppy's. There's some crossover in Poppy's videos into his, but the way he treats Poppy is 
kind of messed up. She's one of the many actresses that I work with on the World Wide Web. I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> you run along now. While he mocks internet fame and likes to pretend to appear disinterested, it's clear from his disaffected attitude and fixation with fame that he craves it. Desperately. He comes across as a smarmy, self-satisfied hipster. I don't care. Also, I wonder if both Mars's and Poppy's shared fixation with fame isn't just an extension of Sinclair, a kind of projection. One recurring theme in Sinclair's videos is him complaining about female pop stars. Only female pop stars, for some reason. I wonder why he only targets women in his videos. Is Nicki Minaj dead yet? Is Nicki Minaj dead yet? It is, it is the, the year, year 2011, 2011 and, and Beyonce, Beyonce is pregnant, pregnant and I don't, don't care. care. Easy there, Edgelord. Your misogyny is showing. This theme also shows up in Poppy's videos like Selena Gomez. Aside from Donald Trump, I can't find any videos where Poppy makes fun of famous men. And I thought this is some feminist meta commentary on how female pop stars' lives are considered public property. The more you look at Sinclair's work, the more awful he comes across. For example, the final video Argo and Sinclair uploaded together is called Day of Retribution. It was uploaded on the 30th of May, 2014, eight days after Elliot Roger went at a killing spree in Southern California. The video is of Argo and Sinclair reading Roger's manifesto, which explains why Rogers was enraged with women for rejecting him. What? This veers from silly cute interim commentary to self-indulgent garbage. I'm guessing this direct was Sinclair's idea. When viewed in hindsight, along with the abuse allegations against Sinclair, this video looks just horrifying. Especially as Rogers has been hailed as a hero by incels, a toxic group of angry men who share their hatred of women online. It also makes me wonder which parts of these projects were thought up by which person. Both Argo and Poppy bring the silly cute satire to pop culture and the internet, while Sinclair's work just seems clumsy. I wish there was a more satisfying ending here. There are some endings, but none of them feel really complete. Even before the lawsuit, Poppy's style was evolving from a cute, kawaii-inspired look to something more new metal. Her short videos have become progressively darker, with blood and religious symbolism taking over from pastel backgrounds. Charlotte is long gone, replaced with videos about the icky babies and the scary mask. The last song on her album, Am I a Girl? X, showcases this transition perfectly, with a blood-drenched poppy singing in her trademark high voice. Honestly, I've really enjoyed her transformation from twee doll to angry, screaming fae. Her clothing, as well as her lyrics and themes, is a lot creepier. It feels particularly satisfying to watch, given what Sinclair allegedly put her through. Her latest album and final project with him, I Disagree, fully embraces this dark, angry sound. And I love any female pop star whose chorus is yelling, I disagree with the way you are failing to pleasure me. And there is a somewhat happy ending, at least for Poppy. In December 2019, Poppy announced that she and Sinclair were parting ways, saying he glamorizes suicide and uses threats of it to manipulate her. Specifically, she said he tried to hang himself with an object of hers while she was on tour. This doesn't seem out of character. Argo mentions Sinclair would allegedly threaten to commit suicide, and in Argo's video Runaway, Sinclair is shown getting shot point blank and bleeding out on the sidewalk. Remember, this is a video he directed. He also references his own death in other videos like Enough is Enough. That video begins with him saying he's been thinking about several things. The first one being... One of them. What is it going to be like after I die? In the video titled Delete Your Facebook, he complains about needing to give money to a doctor then putting a shotgun into his mouth. Ugh. As if the previous allegations of Sinclair's abuse weren't enough, now this. It's like I finally have $8,000 in the bank and let's give it all to a fucking doctor because I don't have insurance. Then I'm gonna put a shotgun in my mouth and blow the brains out of the back of my head. He also has a video titled iPhone handgun knife microphone where he just repeats those four words over and over. 
You know what? I wish Sinclair had left the internet instead of Mars Argo. Sadly, she hasn't made any new music since the breakup. Sinclair released a whiny song called Broken Boy in April 2020. As much as Sinclair pretends to make fun of internet culture and fame, he's become another cog in that machine. I'll explain why. What I find fascinating is that after the breakup, Poppy dyed her hair back to its original color, brown, casting aside the bottle blonde look. She's also been using her birth name in her video descriptions. In April 2020, she began to post skincare and makeup videos. The style is still distinctly her. There's soft ambient music playing, and the disembodied male computer voice introduces the products she's using. There's some cute touches, too. In her video, Airplane Skin Routine with Poppy, some of the products are your favorite lip balm and a cute face mask, things that can't easily be sponsored. The subtle humor and satirizing internet culture is still definitely there. These videos are a direct response to Sinclair leaking photos of her without makeup, as well as some demo tapes. On 6 of May 2020, she posted about this on Twitter and said that my ex-boyfriend would always tell me I looked ugly without makeup and I should never be seen without it. His alleged reactions, along with the apparently violent temper tantrums he's, al- he's allegedly thrown in response to being dumped, convinced me that while Sinclair may have been good with a camera, it was Argo and Poppy who gave these projects spirit and life. His own work is whiny and annoying. A song called Trust Fund has Sinclair complaining that he has to work because he doesn't have a trust fund. Argo's lawsuit alleges that trust fund was intended to be a jab at her and her family's money. No, I'm not making any of this up to make him look bad. He really is that pathetic. He still follows Poppy on YouTube as of May 2020. In fact, that's the only channel he subscribed to. That's not creepy at all. I respect the idea of a woman taking back her image from her abuser. There's something both toxic and pathetic about Sinclair's attempt to manipulate his partner's images for his own gain. I'm also exasperated with men complaining about women taking selfies or using makeup or even people being dismissive about selfies in general. When a man paints a portrait of a woman, it's considered art. But when a woman takes a picture of herself, it's considered self-absorption. I like it when the script is flipped. There she is. Still, I'd feel a lot more positive about Poppy if she apologized to Mars Argo for calling her original lawsuit frivolous. Especially as Poppy and Sinclair's lawyers, Gregory Korn and Howard Weitzman, described Argo's documentation as hand-picked, out-of-context snippets that Mitch Sheets placed in her court filings. There's also the song Anything Like Me from Poppy Sinclair's latest album, I Disagree, which references someone calling the press, likely referring to Mars Argo. It's clear to me from Poppy's shift in appearance, as well as what she said in interviews, that she wants to distance herself from Sinclair. Sadly, Mars Argo is still largely a ghost online. Her last post to Instagram in December 2019 read simply, Last post, then I'll disappear again. It also begs the question, how much of Poppy's persona was Sinclair and how much of it was her? I'd love to know who wrote drama, for example. Was it Sinclair putting words into her mouth as he actually literally did in some of the interviews? Looking back at Poppy's videos, I feel nostalgic. They have a type of manufactured innocence as Poppy gently mocks everything from religion, politics, and consumerism, all while clad in stylish kawaii inspired clothes. However, my heart sinks a little as I watch certain videos like I Am Empowered, which ends with Poppy saying, I'm empowered. I feel empowered when I create high quality content on the internet. Or the one called This Red Pill. It's hard to tell. Is this a mention of misogynistic red pill culture that spawned the likes of Elliot Roger? Or is this just another surreal video featuring a pop star with her hair tied back with a jump rope? So I'm not sure how to end this video. Like I said at the beginning, I identify with these women not because they're famous or pretty, but because I recognize these abuse patterns, which is why I've been reading and watching everything I can about these two. 
I feel super weird talking about this because it's a personal subject. My abusive ex once bought me a gift certificate to a hair salon because he wanted me to get a haircut. I was too busy looking for a job once I got back from overseas to bother. I should have been insulted, but I feel like I should have been flattered. I mean, it was a fancy hair salon. Looking back, I wish I'd gotten my head shaved with that gift certificate. I wish I could send out a powerful spell to warn all young women about the stupid, floppy hair talking about suicide, pseudo intellectual boys that seem so fucking deep. The boys that just want someone to love them and they'll be fine. Someone to take care of them and solve their problems for them and play with their stupid fucking hair. A pretty woman to tell them they're smart and different and special. I should send out a spell to protect all the young women from these psychic vampire fucks. The young woman who who trust these assholes with their creativity and their affection and just wind up getting sucked dry and tossed aside and being told they're not nice enough when they won't put up with another drunken belligerent rampage.